Welcome to Automotive Blockchain, where we bring you blockchain and crypto related news as it pertains to the automotive industry. So it's been a couple of days after July 4th. I took a little bit of time to uh, a little bit of time off. So I wanted to just kind of get back on the horse here and start pumping out a few more videos. So today we are discussing IOTA and Volkswagen. Volkswagen, like many of the other manufacturers, um, pretty much started uh, doing a, investing a lot of their resources into uh, blockchain technologies right about 2018. So uh, I'm going to go directly to the Volkswagen site so that uh, we can get an idea of what they are doing. All right, so we have these two guys here, um, and these two uh, are the kind of the leaders or the head the heads for uh, looking into blockchain. Um, uh, and they are Benjamin Sinram and Nikolai Bartkoviak, uh, and they're from the Volkswagen Group IT. Um, so back in 2018, they were discussing Bitcoin and what they wanted to do. The links to this particular um, part of their website will be in the description below. Uh, I will not go through the whole thing, but I want to break down three actual parts. So in here, what they are looking at is they're saying that Volkswagen AG is currently testing three concrete potential applications for distributed ledger technology beyond the example of cryptocurrencies and like Bitcoin. Um, now, before I get into that, for those of you that don't realize it, exactly how many, I guess you could say models, etc., that the Volkswagen Group actually has, um, this image here kind of gives you a quick summary. So with Sinrim and Bartkoviak, they break these three concrete potential applications down. Um, and I'm going to just highlight the three of them. So the first one is, one is a mileage clocking system that Barkoviak and Sinrim are developing. It makes it hard to manipulate odometers because uh, uh, every odometer reading can be saved permanently on uh, by using a sophisticated system, such as the blockchain is what they're referring to. And I want to kind of pause right there and just let you know that um, this is not the only German manufacturer that is really focused on this. Uh, when we swing over to Daimler, um, as I had mentioned in a previous video um, discussing Daimler and BMW, you know, you can see here that as part of the best practice for SmartVIN, one of the things that BMW focuses on is odometers. And in there, they say that in Germany alone, more than 33%, yes, 33% of the odometers in secondhand cars, that is pre-owned, used cars, has been tampered with. This leads to trust issues and used car market and can potentially harm uh, the brand and image and that applies through all of you know doesn't matter the manufacturer so Daimler is also working on this now outside of Daimler let's bring it back here to the United States right off of NHTSA's website NHTSA uh, estimates that more than 450,000 vehicles are sold each year with false odometer readings this crime costs American car buyers more than 1 billion annually what that's highway robbery. So clearly this is a big problem that stretches um, throughout the world. And that's something that we should keep in mind. So let's move on to the second thing. And that is with Porsche. Porsche is developing a blockchain model that is better than conventional systems at protecting cars from hackers. So do you remember when uh, in the news earlier this year, um, Tesla had um, had posted, or excuse me, Forbes had posted, hackers made Tesla cars autonomously accelerate up to 85 in a 35. Um, so that was just one of the big scares that was in the news uh, of what was going to be hacking, or excuse me, happening um, with these autonomously driven vehicles. And a quick note, there is a difference between uh, fully autonomous and semi-autonomous. And um, Ninety-nine percent of the vehicle Tesla vehicles that are on the road are actually semi-autonomous vehicles. But that said, um, they found out that in this particular case, uh, the vehicles were not hacked, um, at least the the actual you know hardware software of there. But what they did do is they um, got in and manipulated the camera system uh, so that uh, the way they would read it would go faster. So. Um, so that is that. But going back to Volkswagen, um, they, uh, they're saying here that in Porsche, it enables owners to give 
other individuals, such as parcel delivery personnel, a virtual key to open or even use their car. I kind of chuckle at that because part of me wonders why you'd want to have a parcel delivery person just kind of put something in your Porsche. Uh, maybe that's a European thing. But the funnier part about that is that it reminds me of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. My father spent three years restoring this car. It is his love. It is his passion. It is his fault he didn't lock the garage. That is a um, great American classic, but... Um, I just wanted to uh, say that uh, had they had that sort of uh, protection in there with digital ledger technology, uh, Ferris Bueller uh, would have never been able to take the car. So at any rate, um, you know, they move on. It says we are pioneering. Uh, we're doing pioneering work uh, for this uh, over at Porsche, the financial strategist. So that is something that they are working on. And uh, as it says right there, this project uh, uh, is with the Berlin based startup Zan. So let's move on to number three. Um, and number three is located underneath the public versus private blockchain section of this article. And um, so it says, as a third example, Volkswagen Financial Service is currently running a pilot to um, study in Great Britain to test blockchain model that streamlines business contact between providers and consumers of electric charging stations. So there are a lot of manufacturers that are focused on this. Um, and I repeat this. So they're looking to how they can do micro charges to people um, as they are you know, charging their car here, there or everywhere. Um, so that is one of the awesome things of these micro payments. So as it reads here in quotes, different providers have different terms and methods of payment, which can often make it complicated for customers to charge their electric vehicles. Uh, we want to make it easier to improve uh, the customer experience with a new technology. Um, and that's uh, the people over there at Volkswagen Financial Services AG. So there you have it. There's are those three kind of use cases with that. And now I want to get into something that is interesting in this. So if you'll notice here, um, these three projects are just beginning. Now, this is back in 2018. So uh, the blockchain experience is just beginning. Blockchain technology has an enormous potential. No kidding. Uh, <laughs> retroactive also in the field. So we're building our own blockchain solution um, as Bart, uh, Bart Koviak, regardless of whether we uh, they're based on IOTA. Ethereum or other crypto technologies. Now, I kind of chuckle to myself because they mention IOTA first, um, when quite frankly, everyone at this time knows that Ethereum is the larger one. So to me, they were giving a subtle hint. Also at the top of the article, um, you know, they mentioned IOTA again before Ethereum. So um, that was just one of the things where, uh, you know, you may have been able to get a subtle hint as to who they're using. But regardless of that, um, there obviously were plenty of announcements um, of uh, who IOTA is for them. Uh, and first, let's talk about who is IOTA. So this is right from the IOTA site. So scroll down a little bit and this gives exactly what they talk about. IOTA is the first distributed ledger built on the Internet of Things, Internet of Everything, a network for exchanging value and, uh, and between humans and machines. That is IOTA's goal. It is the first distributed ledger uh, built for the Internet of Things, hence IOTA, I-O-T. Where is IOTA overall um, in the news with Volkswagen? IOTA and Volkswagen um, are set out to build the future. And yes, I'm using this particular background um, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of where things are at. So um, this is an article it's, uh, and it's on the IOTA side. So first we were at the blockchain um, systems for Volkswagen. Now we're moving over to um, IOTA or HelloIOTA.com, specifically about Volkswagen and IOTA building the future together. At around the same exact time as the Volkswagen information on their site. This takes a different twist though. Once again, the link to this will be in the description and I just wanted to kind of um, go through this article very, very quickly. Um, the person of note in here um, that should be kind of uh, set aside as um, someone who may talk about a little bit later, um, at this point in time, he was the digital or the chief digital officer and that is Johan Jungwerth. Um, that's Johan Jungwerth, and um, he's a member of the IOTA's supervisory board, or at least he was then. Um, now, that said, who is he overall? Um, yes, he is the chief digital officer, or excuse me, was the chief digital officer um, over at um, uh, Volkswagen. And here's his LinkedIn page. 
Um, but right now he is the vice president of mobility as a service um, for a company uh, by the name of Mobileye. He's really, really passionate, as he says right here, for mobility as a service. Um, and he did serve, uh, you know, a significant amount of time there. So what they do, or what Johan discusses in this article is a number of key things. And you can listen to the uh, kind of like the keynote speech here. But let me just break down the, IO, uh, the Internet of Things related trends at Volkswagen. And you can kind of get an idea of what IOTA is going to be helping them with. So I'm just going to break the bullet points down. Uh, Volkswagen has a strong focus on e-mobility. And they, um, they highlight a whole lot of billions of euros. Um, I think that's what that is there. Uh, planned expenditures over the next few years for battery cell procurement. Okay. Now, here's the interesting thing with this. They're holding themselves accountable to an ambitious goal of producing all in electric or hybrid versions of their entire portfolio, which is 300 different models. So that's a very, very ambitious goal of having all electric or hybrid versions for their entire portfolio of 300 different models. That's awesome. That's aggressive. Um, so second, autonomous, uh, autonomous driving will enable new concepts for mobility. Please keep in mind there is a difference between autonomous and semi-autonomous. Right now, um, all of the Teslas that are out there are semi-autonomous, the ones that um, you see people driving on the roads. Those are semi-autonomous. Um, in this case, um, not just Volkswagen, but most major manufacturers are all pushing for uh, fully autonomous vehicles, even Tesla themselves, uh, fully autonomous vehicles, especially for those delivery type vehicles, and in some cases, even semis. Um, but that takes a lot of infrastructure changes um, to track those vehicles, etc. So, um, and a lot of supercomputing, quite frankly. Um, uh, this, so what, it, what about this? Driving navigation and even optimal traffic flow will be highly optimized with the driver having, uh, well, without the driver having to think about it. Um, makes traveling greener, less stressful, and safer. So when you look at this here, they're talking about the driver in there. That actually is more of a semi-autonomous driving vehicle, um, if there is a driver in there. Uh, there may be laws and regulations put in place to make sure that there's always someone around in the car, even though it's uh, fully autonomous, just in case. One thing I would just want to say about autonomous uh, vehicles, um, you probably should think a little uh, less this. And a little bit more of this. Where am I? You're in a Johnny Cat. So that is the autonomous vehicles. Um, now, what about the public uh, wireless networks um, technology? Now, they're looking of uh, that being implemented sometime in 2019, and they admit it does have some type of limitations. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that is going to be like as they start to look at identifying potential traffic hazards. Um, an example of that would be include a car making an emergency stop or the onboard sensors detecting ice, so that sort of stuff. Um, and the last point I'm going to make on this is AI and how it plays a pivotal role. Um, they, they directly state that we want to develop and deploy high performance AI systems ourselves. So they're looking to keep that in house. Um, so that is uh, the breakdown of a little bit about IOTA as well as uh, Volkswagen and how they are building the future together. Hey gang, let me know what you think of the video. Please like, subscribe. Don't forget uh, to get uh, the bell notifications and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.